I'm a professor at the University of Toronto in radiation oncology. I'm a clinician scientist, and I'm also the head of the Janino Urinary Site Group at Sunnybrook Hospital, which is in Toronto, Canada. Brachytherapy is well known as the best treatment for prostate cancer in terms of getting rid of the disease. Um, a new and up-and-coming uh, form of external beam radiotherapy is called stereotactic body radiotherapy, or SBRT. Other people call it SABR. So it is a form of treatment that allows us to give very similar biologic doses to brachytherapy. And what we wanted to find out is whether SBRT compares, uh, how it compares to brachytherapy in a group of patients with intermediate risk prostate cancer. So we took five prospective clinical trials that we did at Sunnybrook Hospital. There was a total of 250 patients, approximately, who were treated with either SBRT or HGR brachytherapy. In this trial, we used two treatments of HGR brachytherapy by itself, or what's called HGR monotherapy. Uh, other studies that we've done before have shown that HGR with external beam, what's called HGR boost, performs the same. Yeah. So we expected that Either one would be a good comparison against SPRT. When you look at the patients, um, we exclude all patients who had um, androgen deprivation therapy or hormone therapy. So it was pure radiotherapy question in these patients. The overall survival or median follow-up of the patients was nine and a half years. And there was actually more patients in the SPRT group of patients that had worse disease, what we call unfavorable intermediate risk disease. When we looked at the results, we were very surprised. When you look at the chance of the cancer coming back over time, it was four times higher with patients who got brachytherapy. So at 10 years, 10% 10 of patients had their cancer come back with SPRT, and 38% of patients had their cancer come back with uh, HDR monotherapy. When we looked at how patients tolerated the treatments, uh, not surprisingly, there was more bladder problems short-term with brachytherapy, but long-term, there was no differences between either group in terms of uh, bowel problems, late bladder problems, or sexual problems. When we looked at how people um, did in terms of predictors in a multivariate analysis, we found that the use of SBRT and higher PSA scores were predictive of failure. So it validated that uh, the, the separation of those curves that we talked about. This was actually just a, uh, like a comparison among uh, prospective studies. It wasn't meant to be ran it wasn't meant to be compared at the end of the day. So it's, if you will, a post hoc analysis. So some people might say, ah, I can't believe that. It's not really true. It won't affect my practice. Ultimately, we'd like to do a randomized control trial. The problem is in this space, because patients do so well, a trial of, uh, to compare SBRT versus brachytherapy would be probably 3,000 patients and would take 20 years to finish. So we're never going to answer that question. Oh. Then the other question becomes, how about patients at higher risk disease, those with high risk or very high risk prostate cancer? And so that question is still very valid. And actually, we're launching a trial at Sunnybrook. Uh, it's in Canada and the U.S. We hope to recruit Australia and Ireland to a study that randomizes 710 patients to a brachytherapy boost or an SBRT boost. Every patient gets whole pelvic radiotherapy and every patient gets uh, risk-adapted duration of hormone therapy. Um, the, it's a non-inferior phase three study, so that'll be a definitive answer to that question about SBRT and brachytherapy in that higher risk space. We hope to have that study closed in about four years. Don't forget to like, comment, share, and subscribe to Onka Daily on YouTube. Hit the bell icon to stay updated.